So, the question is, how do we get the energy of our sun to shine out of our main sockets and into every kettle and toaster in the world? The answer may well lie here, on the dusty plains of southern Spain, known for its sherry, fighting bulls, and now, this. What I'm actually driving towards is a solar tower. And if you believe all the PR hype, it is the latest success story for solar thermal energy. That will generate about 11 megawatts, and that's enough to power 6,000 Spanish homes. It's a bit of a landmark in its own right, really, and a lot more attractive than your typical coal-fired power station. This is more like a modern cathedral for the worship of a forgotten deity. That's really pretentious, isn't it? Can you cut that out? The French dabbled with solar towers in the 1970s. The Americans have been toying with them for over a decade. But let's be honest, who'd have thought it would be Spain, a nation still regarded by many as unfinished, that would get theirs up and running first? And here it is, a fully operational solar tower of power. So, how does it actually work? Well, this is simply a very large mirror. It's 1,291 square feet in area, or in Napoleon, about 120 square metres. It's actually made up of 28 separate mirror panels bolted together. So, if you broke the whole thing, that would be 196 years of bad luck. And there are over 600 of these arrays spread all around this field. I said that these are simply mirrors, but they are in fact heliostats. Loosely translated, that means they track the sun's position during the day, sort of sucking light out of the sky and throwing it towards the tower. It's a very big tower, it's about 40 storeys or 377 feet. That's uh, approximately 115 metres in Roman Catholic. And uh, I'm not terribly good at heights really, to be honest. But it's OK, because I'm going to protect myself from the adverse effects of vertigo and the risk of falling on my head with this fashionable sun hat. Just for you viewers, I'm going to climb the tower. Again, I'm suffering horribly here to bring you a greater understanding of this latest scientific wonder. Now, from up here, I can see 624 of those heliostats, each one reflecting the sun to the receiver, which is up above me. And that means that the sunlight up there is 624 times as intense as it is down at ground level. And it means that the temperature is 400 degrees C. And that is why, sadly, they're not going to allow me to go up to the next stage, because the instant I walked out there, I'd be burnt to a crisp before I could say anything constructive, which would be amusing, I'm sure, but we haven't finished the rest of the programme yet. Anyway, I think I'll leave you to enjoy the view here. As mystical as the receiver looks, it's actually just a bit of fancy plumbing. A series of water pipes which produce steam so hot it could put a crease in the trousers of every Spanish waiter this side of Barcelona. This slightly dreary prefab is in fact solar mission control. Now, the movement of the heliostats throughout the day is all automatic. It's governed by a big, powerful computer. But in here, they can make very, very fine adjustments. He's got a map of the whole field of heliostats, and he can just sit there and manipulate it to wring absolutely the most energy out of the sun. And from here, they can even tell if one of the heliostats becomes a bit dirty. Now, if it just has the slightest layer of dust on it, its efficiency is reduced by 10%, which they regard as very significant. Dust is a surprisingly low-tech Achilles heel for such a high-tech power station. But being able to power a small town is pretty impressive. 
So much so that the plan is to extend this solar empire by building a new tower, 150 feet taller than the present one. These blokes, for example, say that with this extension that they're building over here, this plant will be able to supply the whole of Seville. And more to the point, 10% of the Earth's surface is desert, and it's not really good for much apart from maybe a remake of Lawrence of Arabia. So why don't we fill them with mirrors and towers? The area of the Sahara Desert could supply the whole of Europe with electricity.